Hey, rookies, congrats on passing your quiz. We're going to jump right into Unit 1, Lesson 4. Make sure that you are seen. I did talk about real briefly how I wanted to focus on us and not the other drivers, that they couldn't see us. You know, why? Uh, I, don't, I don't care about that. I don't know why I made that noise. But the thing is, we need to be actually focused so that we are doing what is needed, and we're going to go above and beyond because we're smart riders and we're trying to pay attention. We're trying to, you know, go home. We need to do everything possible. We cannot put anything on the other person to keep us safe. We cannot do that. We have to take full responsibility and take every action we possibly can to be safe ourselves. And this is what we're going to be doing right now. This is part of it, okay? So rookies, all of you, will be able to demonstrate how to increase your visibility on the motorcycle to ensure the safety of the rider, which is you. Okay, It could be your passenger. There we go. Rookies will be able to demonstrate how gear, driving defensively, and headlights, turn signals, brake lights, and horn can increase visibility. Rookies will be able to demonstrate how to increase their visibility on the motorcycle. Very important. This is your skill. Now, here's what we're going to know. Rookies will learn how gear can increase your visibility. We're going to talk about that like white gear. Very good. Uh, rookies will learn how driving defensively can increase visibility. And rookies will learn how headlights, turn signals, brake lights, and horn can increase visibility. We're going to learn how to do it and why did it, it, it's important. Okay, So as distracted driving becomes a bigger and bigger problem with the phones and everything, oh my gosh, it is essential to take extra steps to ensure maximum visibility as a rider. You know, real quick, a little sidebar going on here. Why do you think phones are a big problem right now? You know, rhetorical question. I don't want any of the rookies answering this. Uh, the dopamine, you know, like you, you look at your phone, get a notification, boom, dopamine hit, you want to do it. It, may, it doesn't make any sense to me because it's just technology. You know, newspapers are technology, books are technology, but nobody's getting a huge, massive dopamine hit. Nobody's getting a huge, massive anything when it comes to reading a newspaper while driving. It, it still happens because there are people that do get that dopamine hit, but the vast majority of the general population has a phone. They get that dopamine hit. They want to check their phone. As soon as something happens, boom, they hit one of us. So it's not going to go away. That's basically what I'm trying to get out here. So. I don't know why I said that and even had that soapbox moment, but I did. So effectively utilize your gear. Okay? The easiest way to increase your visibility is to buy gear that is highly visible. You see me over here? I like to have a white helmet. It's just, it's bobbing around. It, it's contrasting to the black uh, asphalt. I was going to say tarmac. White helmet bouncing around. It's going to grab somebody's attention. People see white on the road, the white stripes, white everything. They're going to see my head too bouncing around between it. High-vis gear is also really good. I just like to have white gear because I don't want to look like a highlighter. But grab yourself some gear that is going to be reflective in some way. Okay, Black looks cool, but it's going to be harder to see. It's not going to change too much. It's just one tiny factor that's going to help you. We add up 10 tiny factors. Hey, we got 10 tiny factors. No, we got a few good ones after that. So here's another factor, driving defensively. So you want to check twice before turning, merging into another lane, making any adjustments, because like I said, your mirrors, check your blind spot. Mirror, check your blind spot. You never know if something could be there. So driving defensively is very important. There's times where you should be aggressive, and that's when you find that escape route and it's a red stage. Boom, you go for it. You don't know what's going on. You should have been 360 situation awareness already. You should know that nobody's there. You see a hazard, boom, aggressively go for that. Just get yourself out of that situation. But for the most part, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're driving defensively. Hopefully, you're never going to have a close call if you ride smart. So we're going to keep our eyes moving constantly as you plan, okay? We're starting to get into that right there. Planning uh, so that you don't get into a collision, okay? Position for safety, locate hazards, adaptive hazards, navigate hazards. We'll talk about that. So the principle of right away is one of many rules of the road that is often misunderstood or even ignored, seriously. Uh, Four-way stop signs piss me off because nobody knows how to even work those. I mean, the blinking red lights at intersections because they're down. Nobody knows how to do anything. <sighs> Anyways, though, you may pull up to an intersection first and have the right-of-way because of it, you know, because you got there first and you're, or you're the right of the person that just came at the same time, right? You look at your road rules. It's never safe to assume the other motorcyclists have seen you or motorists have seen you. So that person that you pull up at the same time, it's your right-of-way. You start going, boom, they hit you. Be very careful, okay? We don't have that extra cushion of a crumple zone, airbags, uh, anything like that, seatbelts. We don't. So we got to be very careful with that. Just because we're right doesn't mean, you know, we get to go home, right? Anyways, when navigating intersections, be aware of vehicles that approach the intersection at roughly the same time. This is what I just said. 
how come I feel like I keep saying these things and they keep happening? So be very careful. If we're coming close to the same thing, maybe I should slow down to just let that person go and then I can go behind them. Okay, if we're starting to see the intersecting lines going on. Here's the car, here's us. We start doing this. How about we start doing this and we slow down? Okay, that's what I'm just trying to say. Okay. A full three second stop at a stop sign, for example, will give you the time. Okay, so three second stop. You guys can read that too while I'm talking. Three seconds stop at a stop sign. That sounds like a lot, and it kind of is. But if it's a busy intersection, yes. This intersection, there's a lot of line of sight problems. I will stop. I'll look. I can't see around this guardrail that's coming up right there, so I creep up a little bit more, open the view, look a little bit more, maybe open up a little bit more, and then I go. And that's about three seconds. So it sounds like a lot. It is a lot, but it's needed. At a busy intersection that it's a stop, I'm checking. I'm looking at road surface. I'm looking at if there's any pedestrians coming. I'm looking to see if anybody's turning left in front of me. I'm seeing if there's anybody behind me about to slam the brakes or run into me. I don't know. I got to get out of here, but it takes me about three seconds. Headlights. Now, remember, we're talking about visibility. We're not talking about, like, what the headlight is. Okay, we, we, we do understand a little bit. We're going to talk more about that in the maintaining your fundamental skills of a motorcycle. We're going to go over all the cool stuff there. But headlights, they can be used to be seen. Interesting. Not just so you can see, but you can be seen. Because if you see this, it's a little bit easier than seeing that. So right here, when you have a light illuminating, it's going to grab your attention. Humans need light to see. So whenever there's a light source, boom, our eyes want it. And that's very important. Now movement too, you can kind of move a little bit like this. Now your headlight's bobbing around a little bit. Hey, guess what? You have a light source that's moving that's going to grab somebody's attention. Once again, this is just one other factor we can do so that we could be extra safe, extra seen. So high-vis gear, making sure that we're you know, slowing down at intersections, being aware, we have headlights, we got a whole bunch more we can do that hopefully will keep us seen and safe, okay? Turn signals, once again, it's a blinking light. It's a moving light. Light is gonna grab people's attention. And it also communicates that you're about to do something. So when somebody sees this, this is that natural language of the road, oh, they're gonna turn. Okay, so now you see it, now you know the intention. You gotta start using it. Don't take off your turn signals. There's some places in some states you don't need turn signals. Just use them. Use them. Brake lights, same thing. It shows the intention of I'm slowing down. It's gonna grab their attention with the bright red lights in the back. Okay, that's what you see right there. Now, the big problem here, though, and we're gonna talk a little bit about this, is that engine braking does not activate those lights. So engine braking is when you downshift and slow down because the motor is actually slowing down. You're not applying the brakes. So whenever you do that, you do apply the brakes. So we'll, we'll talk more about that. Brake light's going to communicate that you're stopping. It's going to communicate that, hey, something needs to be seen. Use them. Use them. Make sure they're actually functioning before you get on the bike. Part of your pre-ride check. Your horn. Now, this is an auditory thing. So, so far, we've been talking about visual vision. But when somebody hears a horn, they start looking. Now, here's the biggest problem. Horns on motorcycles are little baby horns. They're not very good. Get yourself an aftermarket air horn if you're going to do this. But they're little baby horns. Now, also, what's another problem? This car up in front right here probably insulated really well. Really well. So you honk your horn. They can't hear you because it's insulated. Now they're also listening to music on full blast. Listen to Rihanna or something. I don't Is Rihanna still? No, Cardi B. Listening to Cardi B. You never know. They won't hear your horn, and if you rely only on that horn for them to get out of your way or for them to do something, it's not going to be worth it. So vision, they're already looking around, hopefully. That's why distracted driving is very dangerous. But if they're looking around, hopefully they see you. They're not going to hear you. You could still use it, still use it, but don't think it's going to solve your problem, okay? One thing I didn't put up on here is the rev bomb. Rev bombing is when you pull in the clutch and you go, ram, ram, ram. It's not even on here. I have to say something here. Don't do it. It's absolutely dumb. Okay? You should understand that by now. If you don't, keep watching, keep taking this course, and you'll find out why. Okay? So the main thing here is to actually be seen. We want to be seen. We want to be visible. We want people to see us, but we cannot rely on them seeing us. We cannot rely on them keeping us safe because they see us. There's something in here called inattentional blindness. Okay? So this is something where the brain literally says, don't worry about this, worry about this, because we can't process all the information, so we're only going to process what our brains determine is a hazard. And for car drivers, 
They're in cars. They're looking for other cars, especially if they're not a motorcycle rider. If they're a motorcycle rider, they possibly will see motorcyclists. But what they don't understand, what their brain doesn't know, they're not going to look for it. So all they're seeing is other cars. And that is what's dangerous for us. So all the headlights, all the high-vis gear, all the things that we're doing in this chapter, in this lesson, might not work because they are literally not there. Their brain is not working. So this is why it's very important to actually have a skate path. It's very important to actually do what we need to do to get outside of the situation, understanding what we can do, swerving, braking, paying attention ourselves and not relying on the other person. So if we have our headlights, turn signals, brake lights, we have all the high-vis gear, everything, we start adding all these cool factors together, maybe we'll get seen by one of those things, but don't rely on it. Rely on what you can do, okay? Now, this is a big question I get all the time. Which lane position should you be in? Well, here's the thing we're going to be talking about next week. But if you want to watch it now, if you want to take the whole course now, make sure you swing by the link in the description, the MTC Rider Academy, and get everything for $4.99.